In 2291, in an attempt to control violence among deep space miners, the new Earth government legalized no holds barred fighting. The Andrew Mining Corporation, working with the NEG, established a series of leagues and bloody public exhibitions. The fight's popularity grew with their brutality. Soon, Leandri discovered that the public matches were their most profitable enterprise. The Professional League was formed. A cabal of the most violent and skilled warriors in known space selected to fight in a grand tournament. Now it is 2341. Fifty years have passed since the founding of Deathmatch. Profits from the tournament number in the hundreds of billions. You have been selected to fight in the Professional League by the Leandre Rules Board. Your strength and brutality are legendary. The time has come to prove you are the best. To crush your enemies. To win the tournament. Hi everybody, it's 314 React here, and today we are going to be looking at RTX Remix for Unreal Engine 1. In this case, we're going to be looking at it for Unreal Tournament. This is done by the modder mdang2, aka James Horsley. They're the person that did this, their GitHub is in the description, so go down there to grab all the files you need for this. First thing you want to do is go to the link in the description to the GitHub, and you also want to grab the old Unreal patch 469D. Then you want to go to the installation instructions for Max Payne RTX, which is where you can grab the RTX Remix downloader from, which you'll need to download it. I have tried this on Unreal. I even tried installing the original Unreal, the non-gold version of Unreal, but I was not successful and I kept coming up with this error here, which was very frustrating. And no matter what I did, I could not get this to work for the original Unreal. So today, it's going to be on UT99 only. I did try patching it up to 227, Unreal Gold, and even the original Unreal. But even this didn't help because I found I was getting a similar error with Unreal until I patched it to 469D. Anyway, once you've got the RTX Remix downloader, you want to open it up. And then you want to download it. Hit choice one, and it will download it to a folder. And once that's done, it will give an option to open up the directory. You hit yes on that. And then what you do is go into the system folder on Unreal Tournament and drag those files over, overwriting anything that's in there. And then once that's done, you then need to grab the 469D patch. And what I did was grab the zip file rather than the installer. You can grab an exe out, but I find it's easier to just grab the zip file out. Then once you've got that zip file, just drag and drop those files directly into the root Unreal folder and extract them out, overwriting anything that's in there. And that's done. And then you want to get the RTX Remix mod. Again, link in the description. And then you just want to drag and drop those across. Again, overwriting anything that's in there. And then once that is done, you then want to go to the INI file for Unreal Tournament and you want to change the render devices to the two render devices that are listed on the GitHub. Just hit copy there and then paste them in and then make sure the default ones are tabbed out or deleted so that the default render options are not being used. Then all you need to do is go to play and hit play and provided everything's worked, there you go. Now you can see here already there's shadowing enabled, ambient occlusion enabled, all of the great things that you would expect from RTX, but let's skip past that because we've seen it. Now what you should be able to see when you go into the preferences is DirectX 9 RTX enabled. There's also an advanced tab that has nothing under it. And what you can do is go into the files here and you can adjust the maximum number of enabled lights under dxvk.config or you can go under rtx config exactly the same as there is under max pain and you can actually see the rtx settings here now we'll go over why i'm changing the settings here rather than in game in a minute but essentially what you can do is see the rtx config file from max pain here again you can see all the textures that have been assigned to max pain there's none of those on unreal tournament yet so all the textures will be default and not uh, upscaled or enhanced yet. 
But what we can do is take the DLSS settings that we had on Max Payne, copy them over, and then make sure that the DLSS preset is also copied over as well. Now we're back in the game, you can see the problem I had was that I couldn't click on any of the buttons on RTX Remix for some bizarre reason. I'm not sure why, even trying to toggle various things, none of the menus here would activate at all under RTX Remix, so I couldn't actually change any settings in real time, which is a bit of a shame because I wanted to play around with the DLSS settings and see how it affected the frame rate but I don't think the frame rate ever went below 60 FPS. So let's check out some heal pod. And here we are. Immediately you can see the gun looks quite strange here. I'm not sure what's going on here. There's a lot of blur and some weird textures. There's a few other weird things as well, but this is a very early work in progress, so I fully expect it at the moment. It's also a little bit hacky to get going, but once it is going, you can see some really cool stuff there, like the shadows around guns on the floor, the shadows on the ceiling. The lighting also just looks very soft and realistic. You can see shadows up there, shadows from the pipe there, coming from that dynamic light source. It's all working really nice and flawlessly. You can see on the floor there, the floor's a little bit shiny, just like it was in Max Payne, but there's no uh, proper PBR on that yet. And for some reason there, the weapons have turned into a weird sort of gold texture. Again, not sure why. Let's move on to Morpheus. Now this is a really interesting one because there's plenty of shadows here and it looks really, really nice. Again, the gun is still a little bit weird and not everything has a light source. I don't think the pulse rifle has a light source from it there because it wasn't causing any shadows, but everything else should have. And what you can see here is a really cool volumetric kind of fog effect in the sky coming from the lights. I'm not sure whether that's accidental or intentional, but it looks really good. And it's like gives a proper thick fog sort of feeling. Over here we've got some really nice shadows coming from the med packs, coming from that light source there. Really, really physically accurate. Again, you've got sort of double shadows here. We've got two light sources on a number of objects casting opposite shadows. This looks really, really good. Really soft, natural, multiple shadows, multiple lights. It's just a shame about the blurring, that's why I really want to tweak some of the DLSS settings, um, but I imagine there's also anti-go settings. So let's move on to Frigate. Now this is where we see that there's no skyboxes on any of the levels at the moment, there's just a light source in the sky. Which is strange, but it lets us really see the lighting going on here, you can see the dynamic shadows coming from the shock rifles shots there, which is very, very cool. It's just the sheer amount of dynamic lighting everywhere. It even makes the water look a little bit better. We'll get a clearer look on that later. And here we see a really good example of all the dynamic lighting coming from the muzzle flash of that cannon up there, which is causing the light on the bridge, the light from the doorways, everything. And then obviously that's mixed in with the lighting on the interior. Again, more shots from the shock rifle. Really dynamic lights here coming from those lights even shadowing between the stairs, cross shadows, shadows intersecting with each other, additional lighting. And despite the fact there's no PBR, it does make the textures look better. And here we see a really good example of some dynamic shadowing going on here. And again, some more really, really nice shadowing through the stairs there. Again, completely, completely dynamic. And then more sort of volumetric fog out here on this level which is really, really amazing to see. Now what we're gonna check out is some dark match on the level Oblivion. So dark match is just gonna make the entire map completely dark, but it gives you a torch that you can move around. So this level's a little bit lighter than some of the other levels because there's a lot of uh, dynamic lights on it, I believe, but we can use the torch here to really get a good look at those dynamic shadows. I mean, look at that. And there's even some global illumination going on. I did try and get some colored global illumination going, so, you know, to try and bounce colors off of other objects, but I couldn't get it to work. So I think it's just uh, white light that gets uh, globally illuminated. And here you can see the rather bizarre effect it has on the skybox, where it turns it into a wall, which makes everything feel quite claustrophobic and strange. Again, here I was trying to get some of that yellow color from this box to bounce onto the floor, but I couldn't get it to do it. 
you can see the lights bouncing it's just not carrying the light color with it and here we see a lot more of those shadows bouncing around it looks really incredible and here we go over to dm peak also with dark match enabled so again we're getting an incredible look at what ray tracing can do for the atmosphere and the shadowing all it really needs is the skybox is properly enabled because at the moment yeah you can just see it's just hitting a wall on the outside but you can see some of the blur there that's uh, pretty awesome again i was trying to get the color of the wood to bounce here but couldn't quite get it to do it but it is quite incredible just to see just to see the global illumination even with just the simple white color bouncing around with multiple shadows and stuff like that like the shadows are bouncing off from the reflection of the light not just the direct light itself which is so cool so i can't wait for this to be advanced forward even further and this area is really really awesome you can see all the lighting bounce around there it's so physically accurate it's just it's just bizarre sometimes the torch light disappears i think it doesn't reflect off of certain objects so sometimes it will just kind of disappear into nothingness let's grab the shock rifle again and here we look down this infinite hole or looks like infinite hole you see all the light bouncing off really incredible and there we go you can really see the dynamic shadows coming from those moving objects the static objects i don't think those flames are causing any light they might be a little bit of light but only a, only a tiny bit coming from them and next up we're going to disable dark match and go on to a bit of lava giant and again you can see the weird effect it has on the skybox there with just a few lights in the sky i'm not sure whether i've installed this wrong hopefully i haven't um but i think it could just be a restriction at the moment of how far the mod is where the skyboxes are just not being rendered the lava here as well not as glowy as i thought it would be but it still has a clear glow coming from it and also here i'm demonstrating that the shadows will disappear behind geometry just temporarily uh that's probably because of the rays not accumulating in that area yet because they're bouncing off of the geometry nice little hallway here with some really nice shadowing down it again showing off some more dynamic lighting coming from the shots from the shock rifle there and you're actually able to see where you can hit the skybox and shoot it just like an actual object some really nice shadowing here, especially coming from the light source of the flag. And the mixing of the colours there. you got like the blue colour from the lighting of the shock rifle alongside the red colour of the flag there, making a nice purple sort of colour. And then here you'll be able to see when I fire through this gap, you can see the dynamic lights coming through. For some reason, the light coming from that is yellow not blue i don't know why and there's some really nice shadows bouncing down that corridor from the redeemer room the, the lighting in here is really natural really soft looks absolutely beautiful really realistic again even without the pbr textures really enhances the look of everything the lights are, look really really nice there the light sources and then i fire the redeemer off and you can see the shadowing coming from it I was hoping for a bit more shadows when it blew up, but yeah, the explosion is not too powerful. Let's head over to Facing Worlds. Now this has a really ethereal, spooky look to it. And the shadows there are just incredible again the whole skybox has just been turned into a stone wall for some strange reason so it's like we're in a massive building with a random floating island with two towers on it which makes it even more bizarre than the actual facing worlds with its normal skybox again we're going after the top of the red tower here the amazing, amazing shadowing there. The really nice lighting coming from the fires and the little uh, portal there. And then we go over to the blue side, which again just looks really incredible. And then internally, a lot more lighting, of course. 
Again, very well lit. Looks incredible. Really natural, soft lighting. Really seamless between lighting, shadowing, ambient occlusion. I'd love to see some transparent effects in this game with the physically based rendering and some shadows being caused by the muzzle flash of the sniper rifle there. And now we're heading over to Domination with Sesmar, which takes on a completely different look. It looks like it's set at night because the skybox isn't there and it's just kind of a blue replacement and there's some lights in the sky, but there's so much lighting generally on this level such as this green stuff down here which all has a bunch of lights in it which is really really awesome so that makes it look really incredible and these internal areas are very well lit again it's so natural i have got the high-res textures and that really enhances it as well but i imagine once they've been put through rtx remix and actually upscaled the textures put pbr on them they'll look really incredible but even even just now they look really 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 good with the ray tracing on and here we can see some more shadowing coming from the little fires there and the sort of dynamic lighting that comes from the impacts of the minigun there affecting the shadows which is really really cool and then we activate dark match and then we can really see the impact that the bounce lighting has. Again, I don't think it's carrying the color of the objects it's hitting onto the next bounces. But it is causing some amazing shadows. And this music works really well with the ray traced ambience. And this bit here down here reminds me of Sirius Sam 3 a little bit. Again, incredible bounce lighting. And it's just so flawless compared to stencil shadows or shadow mapping. And here we go, you can see these pillars in the dark there. It's really so many shadows, so dynamic. Soft shadows, hard shadows. And now we head over to Assault with high speed, which is really funny because the skybox is completely broken. So usually this is, of course, a moving skybox to make it look like the train is moving at high speed. But because the skyboxes don't work, it's just a completely frozen skybox that just looks like, again, the level is encased in a huge rocky room for some reason. Again, more really nice dynamic lighting there, especially in between those little bits of metal. Really glowy, cool lights coming from those outer bits. And then on the inside, very well lit. Very naturally lit as well, again. And then the outside is just hilariously stuck. Which is interesting, because you can see the blurred texture that they've used to, of course, give the illusion of more speed. And then I get taken out here by the turrets. Now we're heading over to an underwater level. And you can see here the effect that the RTX has on this water is quite nice. Because it's the original effect, but I think the extra lighting is doing something to it that makes it just look a little bit better. It doesn't quite have the bump mapping on it of the DirectX 11 renderer, but it looks really, really nice. And just the general lighting here anyway, all the way... The, com the way the shadows combine together and the lighting mixes together very naturally just increases the fidelity a great deal, especially here where, again, you've got that sort of volumetric lighting. I'm fairly certain it's intentional because you can see there's a light placed in the middle there and there's sort of fogginess around the general underwater bit, which, again, sells the fact that you're underwater even more. It just looks really, really great. And then we go over to DM Gothic which is generally a really nice level to look at because it's got a lot of color to it and quite a bit of variation and a bit of contrast between the sort of stone and the lighting. Again, really nice direct shadow coming there from that light. 
Even the lights here just look really nice, the way RTX Remix is interpreting them. There's a little bit of transparency there on those glass lights. But not quite the sort of bending of light that we've seen on the UT2004 RTX, for example. Now, when we enable dark match, you can really see that uh, you can see the light even better when you feign death and the torch switches off. So you can see all that dynamic light coming from that blue light there. But then you can see everything from the torch. Again, I was trying to get the red color from that carpet to bounce up, but again, I don't think there is uh, colored bounce lighting. But there is really incredible shadows here again. And the floor's not, not too shiny either, which was the problem that was had with the sort of reshade ray tracing. But with this, especially once they enable the custom textures and add in PBR stuff, you'll be able to completely customize how the textures reflect light. This room is really, really fascinating because there's so much complex geometry around the stairs and the pillars, as well as the extra lighting. You can see how all that lighting has an effect and bounces around. Really fascinating between those pillars. Looks incredible. Really, really incredible. Again, another area here where we've feigned death and we've turned the torch off. Just the level of atmosphere and the, the flawless look of all the lighting and in occlusion. The shadows there just look so good. The way they reflect from that bounce light. So now we're going to go over to Arcane Temple. Which is such a cool map in general to look at. But here we're running it with Dark Match. And you can see when feigning death, the glow from that pool of water there really 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 nice i think there's there is a little bit of light coming from those torches and even the health vials while there is a little bit of that shininess again that sort of half-life source shininess that will be resolved when the modder adds in proper pbr textures and stuff like that but even then the textures still look vastly enhanced i mean look at that lighting it's just i don't think that's possible to get this level of shadowing and lighting with rasterization or reshade or anything, especially really complex geometry like this, or just more complex geometry where there's a lot of shadowing and lighting going through it. Again, look at that really subtle lighting down there, and then when the torch comes on, just completely illuminates everything because the torch is so strong. In the outside area here, we see the really weird skybox where it's just frozen clouds, it looks like, but then when you turn the torch off, you can see the incredible glow of the water there. It looks so amazing. So let's head over to Woot Ogonal, which is a custom map and has some really nice water on it. Again, the RTX Remix is doing something with that water effect that makes it look so smooth and so nice. Very strange skybox up there again be very interesting to see how RTX Remix is interpreting some of the calls coming from this game because it's using DirectX 9 so it's interpreting them and doing something different with them and then we go over to Castle Wootenstein which is a very nice map because it has orange and blue colors which look absolutely incredible and I just want to see how it would look with hardware accelerated ray tracing on it giving it all of the off-screen effects and it looks incredible and here you can see that these even shadows coming from the flag that you're holding so i've got a blue flag there and you can see the dynamic shadows from objects being cast there as that light bounces from it and again the blue and orange contrasting colors complementary colors look really really pleasing to the eye and works perfectly with RTX. Now if you're wondering how the RTX handles portals, I went on DM Fractal here and you can see that the portal's just not done at all, it's just a texture. So I don't know how RTX Remix is going to handle that, how it would ever handle it, because you'd have to bounce those rays through that portal almost infinitely, I guess? I don't know. It's interesting. It's interesting to see how they'll handle that. Here we are finishing off on Morpheus with, again, Dark Match. And you can just see 
how nicely the bounce lighting illuminates and all the shadows flying around there absolutely incredible so yeah thanks for watching do check out all the links in the description let me know if i've installed anything wrong let me know how to get this working on unreal the original game if you know how do leave a like leave a comment subscribe and i will see you in the next video